Okay, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. As-salatu was-salam ala ashraf al-anbiya wal-mursaleen wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een amma ba'd. Ayyuh al-ikhwat al-kiram. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa nasallah ta'ala an yataqabbal minna ويغفر لنا ذنوبنا ويكفر عنا سيئاتنا نسأله بعلم نافع ورزق واسع وعليه نتوكل وإليه المصير ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم Praise be to Allah Lord of the worlds Peace and blessings of Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم Brothers and sisters of the saints Salaam to you and the mercy and the blessings of Allah be with you all We ask Allah always to accept from us and to forgive us, to keep us always guided to right. And we ask him for uh, beneficial knowledge and understanding and wide sustenance on him. We are utterly dependent to him is our return and goal. And there is no power and might except that of Allah. And today we move to uh, Al-Hadith Al-Ishroon, the Hadith number 20. As Imam Nawi mentions, and Abi Mas'ud in Uqbatin ibn Amr al Ansari al Badri, radiallahu an, all, Kala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in Mimma Adrakan Nasum in Kalam in Nubuatil Ula, Iza Lam Testahi, Fasna Ma Shit. He says that it is reported from Abu Mas'ud. Uqba ibn Amr al-Ansari, from the Ansar al-Badri, meaning he was a Badr, radiallahu an, may Allah be pleased with him. He said that the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, among the words people obtained from, yeah, from the words of the previous prophets yeah, or previous prophecies, are, if you have no shame, then do as you wish. It is reported by Imam Bukhari in his, in his As-Sahih, Jami As-Sahih, uh, as uh, Imam Nawi mentions. Uh, this hadith also comes in Abu Dawud, Ibn Majah, and in the Adab al-Mufrad book of Imam al-Bukhari as well. Um, a little bit about, we don't have much about the narrator, Abu Mas Mas'ud, Uqba ibn, this is not Ibn Mas'ud, this is Abu Mas'ud, Uqba ibn Amr Ansari, of course he's from the Ansar. Ibn Mas'ud wasn't from the Ansar anyway, but that's a separate issue. Uh, he, uh, Imam Nau mentions uh, Badri, even uh, Imam Tufi said there's ikhtilaf on it amongst the ulama. It's not a big issue, to be honest, uh, whether he was there at Badr or whether he wasn't there at Badr. Most of them uh, said, uh, according to Imam Tufi, that uh, yeah, he went there and uh, therefore his uh, name was attached as Badri to it. But Imam Bukhari himself made a judgment and said he actually witnessed the battle of Azwat al-Badr, meaning he was part of it. And he uh, mentioned that, that this is mentioned in directly in the hadith anyway. So that's the, the rest opinion that he was Badri. He died in 41, uh, uh, first, 41st year of Hijra. Uh, and again, some difference of opinion as to whether he died in Kufa or whether he died in al Madina, He reports about a hundred hadiths from the Prophet ﷺ, this being amongst them. Now, uh, this hadith, uh, in exact words, is actually, as you find it in uh, Sahih al-Bukhari, as I mentioned, if you were to check it there. Um, the first part of it, that that which has among the words which have reached people from the words of 
previous prophecy means that it seems that they're from previous prophethood. In other words, from previous revelation yeah, prophets, which have then circulated and been passed on. So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi saying, uh, these, these are amongst the words that came from previous revelation and previous prophets. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's um, also mentioned uh, by, um, by Ibn Rajab as well. Uh, Imam Nawi has uh, only a, a few lines of comments uh, which are similarly mentioned by Imam At-Tufi as well in his Sharh and are repeated again really by Ibn Rajab. Uh, um, and we should mention Imam Nawi says the idea if you have no sh uh, uh, shame then do as you do as you wish. Uh, he says it can be seen in two ways. Yeah. Uh, one, that it is, it, because it's like an order, yeah, do as you wish if you have no shame. Um, so he says, however, it's not an encouragement, obviously, to do it, but it's an order which is called tahdidi. It's like a warning. It's like somebody who's being bad, you say, go ahead, go and do it then, meaning see what the consequences are. Yeah. So it's come like that. And uh, similarly says uh, uh, Ibn Rajab, and um, uh, similarly says Imam Tufi as well, yeah, because, um, and they say this is similar to in the Quran when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in uh, Surah 41, verse 40. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna alladhina yulhiduna fi ayatina la yakhbawna alayna. Surely those who reject our signs, they are not hidden from us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, is the one who is cast into the hellfire better yeah, than the one who is brought safely in safety on the day of resurrection. Then Allah says, I'malu do. Yeah, it's an order. I'malu ma shi'tum. Do as you wish. Innahu kana bima ta'maluna basira. Yeah, surely. Allah is ever watchful, seeing everything, all that you do. So do as you wish. Surely Allah is watching and seeing, uh, sees everything that you do is a warning. <laughs> yeah, after mentioning the, the fire, the difference between paradise and, and, and hellfire. So when Allah says here, do, it's not an order to actually go and do bad. It's a, 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 and it comes in a sense of warning. This is part of uh, rhetoric is part of ilm uh, al-ma'ani when an order uh, the, the, the word form comes in an order but it doesn't actually mean an order it's a warning kind of order similarly Allah says in surah 39 verse 15 uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fa'budu ma shi'tum min dunihi so all of you worship whoever you wish to worship aside from him, from Allah. Of course, that's not an order to encourage you to go and do that. It's an order of warning. Yeah, if you're going to carry on, do what you want then. Worship whoever you want, aside from Allah. Then Allah says, say, surely the losers are those who lose, yeah, who cause um, loss to themselves, yeah, and anfusahum, and their families on the day of resurrection, yeah. Uh, um on the day of the resurrection, then Allah says, Allah is that not then 
the clear and uh, most clear loss, obvious loss. So that these verses are similar, can be used similar way as Hadith saying, if you have, do as you, do as you wish, coming from that angle. But Imam Nawawi and others say it can also come in the way of uh, meaning that if you have no shame, yeah, what they meant here was that if you don't feel shy about something you're going to do before Allah or that if you don't feel it's shameless, then do it. Yeah. So they mean by that, that in other words, what you're going to do is going to be mubah. Yeah? Or that which is you are ordered to do. Yeah? So meaning, the meaning of you don't have shame, meaning if you don't feel uh, that uh, this is negative before Allah SWT, then do it. Meaning it must be allowed. Yeah? That's another angle that they say it can have the meaning of. Um, And then um, a third way of looking at it, as is uh, mentioned also by Imam Zarabozo and Ibn Rajab, he follows uh, him in uh, mentioning that as well. The third way of looking at it is that even though it comes in the way of an order, its meaning is giving you information. If, in what sense? And they saw it, they call it khabar. In, uh, 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 it's, it's a statement. What's it stating? It's stating that if a person has no shame, then he or she will do whatever he or she wishes. He or she will do whatever he or she wishes. Yeah? So it, it's like a statement. So if somebody has no shame, they'll do that. Excuse me, I'm just trying to get rid of these. Sorry, brothers and sisters, I got cut off. Hello. Assalamu alaikum. The firm, am I already to ca all right to carry on? Yes, Sheikh. Inshallah. Yeah, sorry, I got cut off. Oh, no, no, no problem. Um, yeah. So the third way of looking at it, so it's a, it can be taken as a statement that, of course, if somebody's going to have no shame, they will do as they wish. Yeah bad or good, whatever, they'll do anything. Uh, that's a, a, um, a, another way of looking at it. And the fourth way, yeah, uh, Mazar says, I'm looking at this statement, is that it's actually just encouraging to have um, uh, uh, modesty, haya, and we'll look at that in a minute, what exactly it means to have some sense, sense of shame or modesty uh, because you're not allowed to do whatever you want. So, yeah, the having that sense of shame will help you to do that which is right. To be honest, when I look at all these and I look at the Hadith and how it comes, uh, in my opinion, the best is like the Quran came with those verses, yeah? If you have no sin, do as you please, do as you wish, meaning there'll be consequences. It's come more of a warning. Yeah. It can be. Of course, it gives the idea secondarily anyway that one who doesn't have any shame, they yeah, they they will do. Yeah, they will do bad things because they've lost that sense of uh, shame. So it can have that secondarily. Yeah, but first not my shit, first not my shit, do as you wish is more of a warning uh, when 
uh, especially when it's linked with what came uh, from previous uh, prophets and pre uh, previous revelation. Um, yeah, the rest, most of it has been summarized really uh, by Imam Zarabozo, whatever uh, Ibn Rajab says, especially, you know, he uh, focuses heavily on what Imam Ibn Rajab said in his shot. And um, uh, so if I move to that, Imam Ibn Rajab mentions a couple of hadith which are linked with this, both of our weak. He actually says they're weak themselves, so I'm not even going to waste my time with mentioning them because we have authentic hadith to mention anyway in this regard. So, um, what is the idea of um, Haya? What is Al Haya? Uh, in Arabic, it has similar roots to Hayat with Tamarbuta, which means life. And Haya, some scholars say, is linked with that in a sense that. Uh, if um, somebody's alive as they should be, as, uh, 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 as servants of God, then they will naturally have a sense of shame and modesty. Yeah. And uh, because the dead don't have any sense of shame and modesty. And so some people look at like Al Haya means shame, you can say, modesty. Uh, moral conscious and shyness, all that is the meaning of haya. When I say modesty, we must differentiate because in English, modesty can be applied in the sense of also humility. Yeah, you say somebody's not arrogant, they are modest. We're not talking about that here. Al haya doesn't mean humility. That modesty means humility. The opposite of arrogance is a tawadu, yeah, in Arabic. So this is not the same as that. A tawadu, which means humility. Humility is opposite to arrogance, and modesty can come there as well. Yeah, he's modest, he's not arrogance, meaning he's humble. Yeah, humble and humility is not the same as having a sense of shame and moral conscious and being shy as well, yeah, which is al-haya, which is what we're talking about here. What is the opposite of uh, al-haya? Yeah, the opposite of it in Arabic, we could say al-waqaha, they say al-waqaha, yeah, wa-waqaha, or uh, al-safaqa, al-waqaha is enough really, uh, somebody who has al waqaha means they are shameless. Yeah. In our English, you would say shameless, uh, impudent, insolent, yeah. impertinent. So if something's pertinent, the opposite impertinent, maybe the meaning they are doing inappropriate yeah, behavior from uh, words and, and actions. So impertinent means gone beyond the list. So the idea means really, it means shameless instead of having a sense of shame. That's the opposite, of course, al-waqaha in Arabic. Um, so, uh, Imam, uh, Ibn Rajab said the same, Imam Zarabaza says the same. They say that this haya, a sense of shame, or moral conscious of, or, or modesty or shyness is of two types. That which is naturally put there by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah? And they say, for example, a sense of wanting to cover nakedness, just as human beings. Yeah? The difference between uh, uh, animals, including those people claim to be claim to be our near relatives, Allah alam, um, uh, the, no sense of uh, the nakedness being covered only comes with the sense of naked, covering the nakedness with the human being. And it comes in a natural way. Yeah. It can be eroded. Yeah. It can be eroded with 
the kind of ideas that human beings yeah, then follow yeah, and with their desires, etc. Yeah. So that can be eroded as well. Or it can be escalated and developed further through, through uh, belief in Allah. Yeah. So that's acquired now, higher, acquired sense of shame. So it, before I go there, it can be acquired through belief in Allah, like believers, like, like we say for ourselves. But there's an acquired sense of uh, modesty and shame through society as well, which can affect not just believers, but society itself, which we call al-urf, yeah, culture. And that can change with time and place, yeah. A kind of dress sense may be uh, shameless in a particular culture and time, and it is modest in a different culture and time. Isn't that so? It's possible. Yeah. So, uh, and you can have people who are modest in their words and in their behavior, yeah, uh, who are not Muslim. Isn't that right? You don't say anybody who's a disbeliever, they are all shameless people. No, that's, that's unjust. Yeah. So then we come to the idea of belief. But belief takes it to a different level, just like belief in God and the guidance that came with the final messenger, Muhammad وسلم, took the uh, morals and the akhlaq and the behavior of people to a different level. That's why the Prophet said, Innama bu'istu li makarim al akhlaq, didn't he? Yeah. I have only been sent or raised to perfect the morals and behavior, good behavior and good morals. Perfect meaning they're already there, yeah, but to take them to the next level. Yeah. So the same idea here with al haya or modesty. Part of that. A significant part of that, in fact, the most important part of that acquired uh, idea of shame and sense of modesty and shyness is when you believe in Allah and the, and the day of judgment is to be shy before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing he is watching, seeing whatever you are doing. Shy from what? Not shy from doing the halal things. Yeah? Not shy from doing halal things but feel shy from doing that which he made haram. Yeah. That, is, that is the very foundation of believer's source of haya. It begins by having shine, before having shyness before people, shyness before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. So that is very much linked with belief. And all the scholars mention for a haya, this idea that it, the, and that's why Imam Nawawi, for example, he says, al haya this modesty and shyness, the whole of the deen revolves around it. Yeah? It is such a core part. Yeah? Because that is, this haya is that which is going to push you like Iman. Yeah? Like Iman, if Rajab says similarly, Imam Nawawi said the same, like Iman, it's going to drive you to do that, uh, to obey Allah. Yeah, and stay away from the muharramat, that, that those things which he made haram. Yeah, because you're going to feel uh, 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 shy. Yeah, and have a moral conscience and shame from doing them. Yeah, so that's why Imam Nawawi said that uh, it, uh, the the idea that it uh, uh, the the deen, yeah, the shari the, the life of a believer revolves around this, and that's why he included this hadith in his book. In his 40 hadith, yeah, because remember, he picks those which are the very core. And many times we come across, and many scholars said these four hadith, these three hadith, yeah, are the very essence of uh, Islam, yeah. So, this is one of them, yeah, again. And this is how uh, they saw it. Um, and that's perhaps linked with uh, the idea which is uh, uh, um, mentioned by. Uh, hadith in Bukhari Muslim, uh, when the Prophet said, Al Iman 
בדום וסבעון או בדום וסיתונה שעבה. The Iman consists of 60 or 70 branches, or 70 or 60 branches, more than 60 or more than 70 branches. And the most virtuous of those branches of Iman is the statement there is no God but Allah. And the least of them yeah, is Imatatul Aza Ani Tariq, is to remove something harmful from the road or the street. And then the Prophet said, and modesty and shyness is a part, a branch of Iman. Yeah? And that's why you see why Imam Nambis and even Rajab said that this is like Iman. It, uh, it keeps you on the straight and narrow, as it were, this sense of uh, shyness and modesty before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prevents uh, a believer from sinning. Um, and another hadith which is reported uh, by um, Ahmad ibn Hibban uh, and Tir Imam Tirmidhi reports it from Abu Huraira that the Prophet ﷺ said al hayau min al-Iman that modesty is from faith wal imanu fil jannah and faith or Iman will be in paradise wal bazau min al-jafa and baza or Bazi is the one who's speaking foul language. So it's trying to show you shamelessness as in language, yeah, in words compared to uh, modesty and shyness uh, and, and having shame. So then the Prophet said, foul speech and obscenity is from coarseness and harshness of character meaning, yeah? And coarseness and harshness will be in the fire. Yeah, well, Jafa Ufin now. This is authentic hadith. Uh, also, uh, Imam Tirmidhi mentions a hadith which is authentic from Anas that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam maqal, "Ma kan al fuhshu fi shayin illa shana." Yeah, whenever there is fuhsh, meaning obscenity, in something, yeah. It spoils or ruins it. Yeah? And whenever there is modesty and shyness in something, yeah? Yeah? there isn't modesty and shyness in something except that it beautifies it from the Prophet. So that also shows you this hadith that one of the things aside from, as we said, al waqaha in Arabic being the opposite of al haya. Al fuhsh or fahisha, which is obscenity, again, uh, which is shameless, of course, is also mentioned as in this hadith, being opposite to uh, to ha uh, haya or modesty, as is al baza, which is uh, obscene uh, talk and obscene speech. Um, and the Prophet yeah. As mentioned in Hadith in Bukhari Muslim, can the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ashadu haya, yeah, ashadu haya min al adra min khidriha. Fa iza ra'a shay'an yakrahuhu arafnahu fi wajhi. Yeah. It said the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was one of the most shy and modest people around. More, he was, sorry, he was more shy, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and modest. Uh, um, yeah, then a virgin girl in her private room. Yeah, that's how the reporter, the Sahabi, has mentioned it. And he says that if the Prophet saw something which he disliked, yeah, which was not nice, yeah, or immodest, you can say, we would realize it from his face. Yeah, his face would show us. Yeah, we could tell from his face and his appearance that, you know, this was uh, uh, not a pleasant thing. Um, one, of, one other thing I want to mention while defining this uh, shyness and modesty. And of course, we have, before I mention that, we have a hadith about the Prophet saying, about Uthman ibn Affan, 
yeah, that is a Sahabi whom even the angels feel, because of his shyness and modesty, even the angels feel shy when he's there, yeah, showing his uh, beautiful character and his uh, modesty uh, uh, and shyness, that of uh, Uthman ibn Affan, which is famous. Uh, uh, he, and he's known by the title of the one who was uh, uh, so shy and so modest. Radiallahu an. Now, another term that uh, ulama mentioned to differentiate al haya from is khajal. Khajal means to be embarrassed or to be bashful. You could say that it has an element of haya in it, yeah, bashful, because it gives the idea of being uh, shy. Yeah? Uh, many people and many uh, scholars will say khajal is a negative thing because it means, it's, they say it's not linked with being modest and shy before Allah or having a sense of shame. But they say to be extremely embarrassed and bashful all the time is a sign of weakness or cowardice. Cowardice. Uh, it's like somebody being scared to speak, somebody who feels they've got some deficiency in them. They always feel they've got an inferiority complex and therefore they won't uh, go out too much, you know, uh, or they won't speak in front of people. They won't ask a question. Yeah. Yeah. All that they say are negative signs of khajal, yeah, extreme bashfulness. Um, and I think generally that can be said, but khajal, I believe, is not all negative. It does have an element in it of al haya, of shyness, yeah. Uh, um, but it can, it can lead to negativity. Whereas al haya, we have a hadith in, uh, reported by Imam Bukhari. In his Sahih from Abdullah ibn Umar, radiallahu anhuma, Marra Nabi, Marra Nabi, you sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed by Allah Rajul, a person. Wahua yu'atab fil haya, and he was admonishing someone else about modesty, yeah, and shyness. Yaqul innaka latastahyi, he was saying, you are very shy. Yeah. Uh, and Ibn Umar saying, it seemed as though he was telling him off for being shy and because it's going to harm you. The shyness. Yeah. Whereas in the authentic hadith, we have the most uh, uh, shy and modest person, Uthman ibn Affan. So it's obviously not a negative, but this Sahabi at the time of the Prophet was telling another one off for being too shy. However, the Prophet وسلم, passed by and then the Messenger وسلم, spoke up and said, Dahu fa in al haya min al iman. Yeah, and in one version he said, Al haya u la yati illa bi khayr. The Prophet وسلم, said, Leave him alone. For haya, modesty, is part of faith. In another statement, Buhari Muslim, the Prophet وسلم, said that haya or modesty and shyness uh, doesn't come except with good. It's, it's always uh, comes with good. Uh, and that allows still for exception, okay? Despite the Prophet I'm saying that. And uh, let me come to the exception before I add a few more things on the idea of haya and its relevance to us. Uh, today, what exactly it does mean, because some people uh, do misunderstand this. There are two ways and uh, that haya or khajal or being bashful yeah, is probably linked more with that. That can lead to negative situation. One, uh, when someone has a fear of people, yeah, fear of people that some people say that's shyness but actually it's not shyness and modesty it's more to do with khajal as i mentioned before which is more to do with cowardice and and fear of speaking 
yeah, the truth, yeah, because you're afraid of the people that you're going to speak it in front of. So that is not higher, yeah, yeah. That is not higher, and I'll explain further because higher doesn't lead to weakness. That's not the idea, and I'll, uh, I'll explain it further later. Uh, uh, Maam Zanabozo mentions a long hadith which is in Ahmad and Tirmidhi, which is not authentic. Yeah? And in that hadith, which is meant, uh, from Sayyid Abi Sayyid al Khudri, saying that the Prophet said, Allah, la yamna anna rajulan haybatun lin nas, haybatun nas an yakul bihaq iza alima. Yeah. So Abi Sayyid al Khudri is saying that. That, uh, don't, that a person shouldn't be prevented because of the fear of human beings in speaking the truth, if he or she knows that truth. Yeah? And then Abu Sayyid starts crying in this week of the saying, for by Allah, we've seen things and we've been afraid of the rulers, yeah? uh, tyrant or cruel rulers in our time, and we didn't speak and say something. But anyway, this is not authentic, this hadith. So nevertheless, the idea is correct. Yeah. That al-haya is not, is not linked with this. Uh, a second thing is al-haya, uh, the exception where it can be negative, yeah, uh, is uh, preventing from learning. Yeah. And I think because uh, Mujahid, who's a student of Abdullah ibn Abbas, the famous uh, Mufassir of the Qur'an uh, from uh, the Tabi'een. Yeah. Uh, Imam Bukhari mentions that Mujahid said, لا يتعلم العلم مستحجين ولا مستقبرين. Two people will not yeah, learn knowledge properly, he means. Yeah. Two people cannot learn knowledge the one who is too shy and the one who is arrogant. The one who is too shy because they're not going to clarify things because they're too shy to ask questions. And the one who is arrogant because as ignorant as they might be, the arrogance stops them uh, asking and inquiring or even learning because they think they know it all. You know, they say Mr. Know-it-all. Yeah, those are the kind of people who are in danger of not really learning. And uh, in contrast to that, you see in uh, Bukhari and Abu Dawood, the famous statement of Umm al-Mu'mineen Aisha radiallahu anha, قال, نِعْمُ nisa نِسَاءُ ansar yeah? The most blessed women are the women of the Ansar. لَمْ يَكُنْ يَمْنَعُهُنَّ الْحَيَاءِ Their modesty and shyness did not prevent them. And yes, Alna and in asking about religion. And in understanding it. Yeah. Their shyness didn't prevent them. And now we have an example of that in a hadith in Bukhari. Ja'at Um Sulaim. Yeah. Who's the mother of Anas? Yeah. Um Sulaim came. To the messenger of Allah, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "Fakalat ya Rasulullah," and she said, "O messenger of Allah, in Allah la yastahi min al haq. Surely Allah is not shy from the truth, meaning not shy for us asking about the truth." Fahal al al maratu, al al marati, min ghuslin ida ihtamalat. Is there bath for a woman when she has? Yeah, a wet discharge, uh, meaning a sexual wet discharge, of course, it's to, uh, talking about. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Either uh, ihtalamat, not ihtalamat, from ihtilam. Yeah, meaning when she has an orgasm, basically, that's what it's really saying. So the messenger of the Prophet said, if she sees the liquid yeah, from it, فَغَطَّتْ أُمْ سَلَمَ تَعْنِي وَجْهَهَا وَقَالَتْ Then 
it says Um Salama, yeah, covered her face, yeah, out of shyness because she wants to ask something even more. She says, Wakala, Ya Rasulullah, or Messenger of Allah, Awa Tahtalim al Maratu, does a woman have an orgasm? Kala Naam, the Prophet said, look at the kind of uh, questions the women are asking the Prophet. That's why Umar Mu'minin Aisha Tashayz in the previous series I mentioned, yeah, their shyness didn't prevent them to ask about the deen and, yeah. Uh, and if they're going to be overly shy, they're never going to ask and these questions will not be there for answer for them because it concerns them uh, and, and they are the kind of... So uh, Umar Mu'minin is saying about the, people, the women of the Ansar because she would not imagine the people, the women of Makkah ever asking questions like that. There's just a, a cultural difference between them. So... Uh, does a woman uh, even have an orgasm? He said, yes. Taribat uh, yaminak. Meaning you don't even realize that. Fabima yusbihu huha waladuha. Yeah, yusbihu ha waladuha. How else do you think that he's saying uh, does, uh, is a child born? Meaning there's an element from her, not just in the orgasm, but in the uh, 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 reproductive side he's talking about the egg and the ovum how else do you think Yeah. so he relates it with that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam now these are the kind of things that are being mentioned by uh, with some uh, clarifications by myself what is uh, al haya We've already been discussing it. Let me clarify further, contrary to what many people think. Modesty and shyness is not the realm of females only, like many people in our Muslim community think. Many men in our Muslim community think shyness is just linked with women. Yeah? And uh, there's, no, there's no such thing as shyness for men. The most shy, uh, 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 Prophet was talking about the Sahaba saying he was the most uh, more shy than a, a, a virgin girl uh, who used to uh, keep away and uh, uh, stay in a room. Yeah, and Uthman and Nefan have already mentioned, uh, and the, the the ones we're being so this idea of modesty and shyness, which begins with shyness before Allah, yeah, and uh, and then shyness, of course, in society and people, is the realm of male and female. Yeah, it can be exhibited in different ways, but it means both yeah. shyness and modesty from both. And um, it is to do with behavior. Many people think shyness and modesty is just in the dress. It, it's part of it is dress, but it's much more than that, more comprehensive. It's to do with how we behave. Yeah, our speech and our behavior, our manners are much more about haya than is the dress, actually. Never mind our uh, 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 behavior, uh, 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 the sayings and doings, but uh, al haya for male and female, uh, its first part is to do with before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. And therefore, it is about in word and behavior, yeah, staying away from maxia, from that which is simple before us, having to do that. Yeah, that's for believers, of course. That's for believers. That is uh, haya, and that's of course for believers who are male and female. That's not. We don't say it's only for the females that they should avoid sinning because of haya, do we? Modesty and shyness before God is for male and female. Um, so, in regards to this, is something which is more and more pertinent in a in a time where impertinence is widespread. And I choose my word on purpose. Al Haya is more and more pertinent, yeah, in a society where impertinence. And, yeah, shamelessness is that which is circulating all around. Yeah. Uh, and especially in the world that we live in today, of social media, of TikTok, of Instagram, yeah, of um, 
uh, um, uh, what do you call them? Um, uh, instantly taking photos of oneself and, and everything that comes with it. It's not about taking a photo. Nobody's saying just taking a photo of yourself, a selfie, suddenly you become uh, shameless. No, that's not the idea. It's, you know what I'm talking about? It's deeper than that. And people are able, in fact, today's uh, social media of TikTok and Instagram and everything else on an instant has allowed male and females to be in their own bedrooms, young wherever they may be, maybe living in a modest and good family, to send out videos and photos which are shameless, yeah, because it's done in front of a camera thinking it's just a screen, right? Yeah, and actually it goes out to thousands and the world can see all over the place, yeah? And if they were actually to do it with all those people sitting in a hall in an audience, yeah, would it be the same? Would it be the same, meaning would it be easy for them to do as it is with the social media? No, it wouldn't be, actually. It'd be much more difficult because of that sense of natural shame that is uh, there yeah? and a sense of uh, society and upbringing shame and religious shame even. But it's easy for that shame yeah, to be thrown away because you're just facing a camera screen or a telephone yeah? and anything goes. Yeah. So that's a big danger. This is Shaitan playing the role of making society more and more shameless. Uh, and therefore, the idea of uh, uh, al-haya and, uh, and having a sense of modesty and shame has been demoted and actually been described and seen by many as negative because they mix up modesty and shyness with weakness, which was to do with khajal, yeah, somebody being cowardice and weak and just, yeah, but modesty and shyness does not equal weakness. Modesty and shyness means you stand your ground and speak in front of a tyrant and you speak the truth, yeah, because you have modesty and shyness before Allah that you're going to speak the truth. So modesty and shyness actually gives you confidence, not makes you weak people. People mix that up. And therefore, when they mix it up, yeah, they have perpetuated in schools and in universities and in society this idea that the confident person, instead of the weak one, is the one with the loud mouth, yeah, even if it's got foul words coming out of it. The louder you are, laugh loud in front of everybody, talk loud in front of everybody, yeah. And then also even uh, dress and wear makeup loud, which is to attract everybody's attention. Oh, yeah, this is a very confident person. Uh, she's, uh, isn't she, isn't she uh, uh, brave and courageous? Isn't he brave and courageous? Uh, just for having a big mouth and uh, nasty words. That's not, uh, that's not confidence. That's your shamelessness, yeah? And this is the kind of thing that it's all been uh, mixed up with uh, and perhaps because we misunderstood al haya doesn't mean that you become timid like sheep and let people walk all over you al haya doesn't mean that uh, somebody uh, prevents you from uh, doing good or prevents you from your salah or your religion that you just timidly walk away like a mouse that is not al haya that is just cowardice uh, al haya if we really understand it it is to, uh, it gives instead uh, confidence because we give priority in uh, as we do for iman in Allah. Uh, uh, we give priority to having that haya before Allah subhanahu wa taala before anybody else, whatever people think. Yeah, whatever people think, as long as we are not doing maxia and sin before Allah, then it gives that confidence. Of uh, uh, um, so that's very important to understand. The other thing is that people reduce to uh, uh, al-haya to uh, some superficialities, yeah? Um, and, and I'm going to mention, uh, firstly, the, the, the female, and now, now the believers, the idea. We reduce shyness and haya to just putting a scarf on the head. That has its problems, to reduce, uh, and this topic I've talked about in my lectures on Islam and hijab, 
uh, etc. And there's, they're available in four or five long sessions. I don't intend to open the whole topic with that, but the idea of modesty and shyness wasn't just to do with the scarf. More than that, it was to do with how we talk, how we, our mannerisms, yeah, what we talk about, yeah. Uh, too many times I witness girls, young ladies with a scarf on their head and I've heard the most foulest of language and inappropriate conversation where I've overheard going on, yeah loud as well yeah which is the height of shamelessness not uh having the, uh, so they haven't really understood what this idea of modesty in islam is yeah um and on the other hand also um uh, and that's that, that has many many reasons to do with tarbiyah and understanding yeah and it's a problem for our community, not just for the parents of that particular uh, girl, et cetera, but for society and imams as well, and how they uh, perpetuate this idea. And uh, often to the extreme that they reduced a woman uh, and a girl, her, her Islam, just to the scarf, that's it. And if somebody is not wearing a scarf, they may be modest, they may be praying five times a day, maybe a very uh, a good uh, woman uh, who's done Umrah, been to Hajj, fast in Ramadan, is have uh, taqwa Allah. Some have gone as far as even calling such women prostitutes just because they didn't wear a scarf on the head. And that's kind of indecency from the people who make those kind of statements, I would say. Now, on the other hand, we also have this uh, male chauvinism in our community of they think that the, the sense of modest dress and behavior is only to be applied to female again. So the guys, and one of the reasons why good girls are sitting around in their 30s and 40s not married is because they can't find a decent guy who's got any higher because they think the lads we can do anything we can swear left right and take the center take drugs be you know mess about with girls left right and center but when i want to get married now i'm looking for a modest girl yeah what happened to your modesty and immodesty and shamelessness yeah so this idea, and, and even the dress sense, yeah? they think they can do whatever they want, but the woman has to be you know, dressed in a particular way. Uh, well, that's not the woman they're gonna mess about with, but it's the woman they want to perhaps settle down with. She has to be like that. But the woman they're gonna mess about with, they, 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 they have no problem with her dressing the way she's doing and behaving the way she's doing beyond that as well. But the idea of, you know, the, um, uh, So, so this, this idea of, uh, is prevalent because of what I said earlier. That is because they think haya and modesty yeah, and shyness is only for the, the females, not for the males. Yeah? So this is also in itself causing problems, cause problems and continue to be perpetuated. Yeah. And it's still prevalent, perhaps more so than even in the past. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's all I want to say on this. Suffice it to say that you can see why Imam Nawi included this hadith. And I, 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 in a sense, I agree with him because Prophet is making uh, haya as uh, a part of the Iman, and then that's why Imam Nawi is saying that um, the whole of uh, um, Islam really revolves around this uh, uh, idea of uh, Haya. Finally, actually, I just remember the last comment I want to make. And this is the nature and the fitrah and the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just like if you sin and don't do Tawbah and trying uh, try and amend your ways, yeah, a black spot, the Prophet Islam appears. And if you sin more, you carry on sinning, what happens? More and more black spots appear and they gather together and your heart becomes hardened. Haya behaves similarly. If you behave shamelessly without doing tawbah and without the, the uh, volition to change, then you carry on 
doing more shameless, then you become shameless to the extent that you don't even realize that you are being shameless. Isn't that so, brothers and sisters? Yeah. So little by little, shaitan takes a complete hold of people. That And that's what happens to human beings, actually, aside from uh, believers or otherwise. Yeah. When uh, a man or a woman, and, and what's prevalent in the society, of course, which uh, is, a, uh, is selling women, they start taking their clothes off. They take uh, a little bit. Yeah, the clothes get shorter and shorter. Yeah, and they get used to it. There's no shame then wearing a miniskirt once you start wearing it. And then those who take their clothes off completely, yeah, they may start, start off because of the fitra and nature, shy. They all do. It's, it, it's, they all do. But when they keep doing it, yeah, all that disappears. Yeah, they just do it as like it becomes like second nature, and this is the dangerous thing uh, with uh, with with sin itself, yeah? including this idea of shamelessness. And, and that's why Ibn Qayyim actually, when I was thinking about this, Ibn Qayyim said similarly. Interestingly, a student of uh, Ibn Taymiyyah, he said if a person commits sin. His haya lessens, and this is before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. More and more sin they do, their haya gets less and less until it becomes non-existent. Yeah. And people even start bragging about it. It's true, isn't it? Yeah. People actually start bragging about it. And what you see that from the so-called stars that appear on the shows and things. People are bragging about that they've done this and done that. Yeah. Which is when really you've gone to the pits of shamelessness in the bottom. And Imam Bukhari will finish with this. The Prophet said, uh, All of my ummah will be pardoned and forgiven except those who expose their sins openly. And part of that exposing is that a person that a person does by night a deed, meaning a bad deed. Then by the morning, then comes the morning. And Allah had put the cover on that sin for that person. Yeah, meaning they've done it in hiding. Yet the person says, Oh, so-and-so, I did yesterday such and such and such and such. Yeah. Whereas, yeah, he had covered it by doing it uh, in darkness the, the night before. Uh, 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 sorry, that, that his Lord had covered him. Yeah. Covered him. So he's exposing it himself. anhu. Yeah, and yet in the morning, he's taking the cover that Allah put on him, he or she, and exposing it openly. Yeah, this is the Prophet ﷺ saying Allah will not pardon these people because they are actually bragging about their sin and evil and modesty and shamelessness. May Allah save us from that. Well, uh, after that one, alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Any questions, brothers and sisters? Unbelievably, we've done one hadith in one session. That's not bad, is it? <laughs> I'm almost disappointed that we've only done uh, it in one session. So I'm expecting, inshallah, some more commentary from you. Uh, just <laughs> there's, only, there's only four words of life to the hadith. <laughs> so, Alhamdulillah, but look, it's, it's deep, mashallah. And you went into amazing depths, subhanAllah. I'm always amazed by the wonderful words of the Prophet, sallallahu uh, just want to ask you, Akhi, was there a context for the hadith? Because when it was reported, it's just, I think it was directly, wasn't it? Rather than perhaps where, when it occurred, was that significant or perhaps not? Not this hadith, not this hadith. Not, that's why they say, was it this way? Was it that way? Mm. You know, how can we take and I mean, some of them had a context. The other hadith I gave you, for example, the two who were, uh, one was telling the other one off about being too uh, shy and the boxer stuff goes by and says, that has a context. This one, no. This comes as it is. Okay. Thank you. And no other report brings any other context to it.
you know, we're looking for a sabab al-warud, as they say, or the hadith, the situation of it coming. No, we don't have that. Yes, and, it, and, it, and, and look at the, the, the contents of it. It doesn't require it. It's quite explanatory as it stands, because it's a major principle. Like, that's why the Prophet is saying, Al-Haya, Shubhatul Min Al-Iman. That is, it's a branch of Iman, Al-Haya. It's such, such a core value. Any other questions, brothers and sisters? Just off the back of that, what you just said, it was a branch of Iman, and obviously that the highest is belief in Allah SWT, and the lowest is removing a, a harmful object from the path. Was it stated whereabouts on that scale? No. This was? No. No. Okay. Part of it, yeah, meaning it's very, yeah, is, and the fact that he mentioned it specifically shows you it's very important. Right. Yes, much yeah. And he didn't mention all the other branches. True. Smile. So the fact that he mentions it shows you how serious and important it is. Wow. Any other questions? No, everybody all right there? So, um, brothers and sisters, we'll do the next of these uh, next time, inshallah, if you have no more questions on this one. Um, yeah, what's the date next week? 15th of Yeah. Yeah, so we'll do next week, inshallah, and after that, I think we'll be stopping, inshallah. Is that all right, Zafar? Yes, no, sure. No written, no written questions that I'm avoiding? Uh, no. There's no question. I, hope, uh, um, I noticed that uh, there's somebody else in Manchester doing a 40 Hadith course. Um, there was something circulated, uh, but uh, uh, I... Um, uh, I've forgotten the name of the person doing it, but I think it's um, short presentations. Um, may Allah help us and accept from us and forgive us and uh, give us benefit. Uh, anything good I said was with the tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, any mistakes to mine and from shaitan. Uh, may Allah forgive me for that. Jazakumullah khairan wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi.